do want to go over just some of the basics at this point. If you are just tuning in, maybe just waking up at this hour, a container ship ramming into a major bridge in Baltimore this morning, causing it to snap in several places and plunge into the river below. Several vehicles were told fell into the water and rescuers initially said they believe they were looking for at least seven people, though the number could be higher as they are trying to figure everything out. Do you want to take you to another live view that we do have? Again, just another angle that is showing uh, the scene that we are watching at this hour. Two people pulled from the waters, one of them in serious condition. That is according to Baltimore Fire Chief James Wallace. He said authorities, quote, may be looking for upwards of seven people, but said, as I mentioned, the number could change, and it was not clear if the two rescued were included in the seven. The vessel appears to have crashed into one of the supports at the Francis Scott Key Bridge. That's according to video that's been circulating all over social media over the last several hours. Kevin Cartwright, the director of communications for the Baltimore Fire Department, calling this, quote, a developing mass casualty event. Now, the temperature in the river at the time was about 47 degrees in the early hours of Tuesday. That is according to a buoy that collects data for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Some of the cargo actually did appear to be dangling from the bridge, which does span the river to the entrance there to a busy harbor. The river leads to the Port of Baltimore. That is, of course, a major hub for shipping on the East Coast. It opened back in 1977 and is named for the writer of the Star Spangled Banner. Maryland Governor Wes Moore declaring a state of emergency and said he was working to get federal resources deployed. The FBI also on scene. I do want to check in right now with our Fox DC team as they are out there. You couldn't see. And now uh, what you see behind me, those colorful boxes, those are the cargo containers that are on the cargo ship itself. And as you cross over the bridge there, you can see the part of it colliding and, and just resting up against what is left of those truss, those steel truss spans on the key bridge. So pretty incredible images here. Uh, what we know, this is still an active search and rescue operation. Two people were rescued. One refused treatment. The other said to be in pretty serious condition, so much so that uh, we were told that they were not able to speak with that person about exactly what happened. We know that they have been bringing in all kinds of assets from federal agencies. They are using uh, spotlights and sonar. They have detected some vehicles or what would appear to be the signature of vehicles underwater. And here's what Fire Chief James Wallace said about potential other victims. Maybe looking for upwards of seven individuals. This is a very large incident. It involves a very large footprint. Multiple agencies are operating. Therefore, information is subject to change as we get more intel um, and as our crews work through the morning. We need to do damage assessment of, of the ship itself before we can board that ship. Um, and we need to continue our subsurface search, which is including um, different types of sonar. We have side scan sonar. We have other sonar capabilities here. We have underwater um, UAVs that we're working with. And throughout the night, we've also been working with uh, infrared technology, both from the air and on the water surface. So um, I'm going to wrap up here with just saying this continues to be a search and rescue operation. And, and Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott, they're also saying and what we've all been thinking, looking at that video, that it looks like something out of a disaster movie. In fact, I didn't believe it at first when I saw it. And even speaking with Maryland Transportation Authority folks, they said the same thing. They had to wait and just pause a second or two to try to confirm that it was indeed real. And when they did, just that shocking and sobering realization of what actually happened here. There will be a lot of questions as to how this could happen. This cargo ship, the Dolly, had just left Dundalk about 1.30 in the morning. It was headed toward uh, Colombo, Sri Lanka. You would think it would be familiar with this strike, one of those pillars, which is very well lit. So those are going to be more of the questions to come afterward. But right now, all thoughts are focused on the rescue efforts for the survivors. We'll send it back to you. All right, Mel, thanks very much. Mel's going to keep us posted on everything. But, just, I mean, stunning images behind Mel where you see you follow the road to where the bridge should be. Mm. And instead, all you see are those cargo containers that are still on that container ship that struck the bridge support earlier this morning.
a crumbled mess that authorities are going to have to continue to search through and sift through throughout the course of the morning. Thanks so much, Melanie. We'll check back in as soon as you learn more. Annie Mae. Yeah, thanks, Marissa. We are taking a look at Sky. A big thank you to our Fox 5 DC team as they have been covering this around the clock and we have been checking in with Fox 5 DC's Melanie Alnwick. We know that Fox 29 Philadelphia also has Greg Payne out there, so we're going to check in for his live report coming up in a matter of minutes. As you can see to the right side of your screen, that is just one aerial image that does show the bridge collapsed and that is the vessel that struck it right there on your screen. Want to pop it up just a little bit bigger so you can get a better view of the situation. We've been showing you the different shots that we have coming in from our different affiliates that are out there. That is a live look at three different shots on your screen there. And you can see to the one uh, that is over there on the left, it's an aerial image that really shows how large that ship is that did strike the bridge. Off to the top right hand side, a different view showing the bridge collapse there with uh, essentially that cargo ship from the other side. And then you do have a view on the bottom right hand side of your screen that also shows essentially the area of the bridge where it is shut down. That shot on your screen is coming in from Fox News. The time now is 7.04 on the East Coast and 4.04 on the West Coast. We do continue to cover the latest here on this bridge collapse. Secretary Pete Buttigieg of Transportation saying that he's spoken with Governor Moore and Mayor Scott to offer the U.S. Department of Transportation support after that vessel strike and collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Rescue efforts do remain underway and drivers in the Baltimore area should follow local responder guidance on any detours. All right. Okay, good morning. My name is Chief James Wallace. I'm the chief of the Baltimore City Fire Department. I'm joined this morning by our Mayor Brandon Scott, Council President Mosby, Councilwoman Porter, County Executive Johnny Oshevsky, and Baltimore County Fire Chief Joanne Rund. Um, our brief this morning will be an update on the search and rescue operation that's ongoing at this point. So at approximately 0140 hours this morning, our 911 center dispatched a call to the Baltimore City Fire Department for a report of a water rescue um, in the Patapsco River in the area of the Key Bridge. As units were responding, they began to receive numerous calls indicating multiple people in the water. At some point during that, that chain of events of calls, uh, we began to receive indications that a, uh, a ship may have struck the Key Bridge. We got further information through multiple calls that the Key Bridge, um, portions of the Key Bridge had actually collapsed. At about 0150 hours, our first unit arrived on scene and reported um, a complete collapse of the key bridge. Um, we were also given information at that time that there were likely multiple people on the bridge at the time of the collapse and that as a result multiple people were in the water. We were able to remove uh, two people from the water. One individual refused service and refused transport. Essentially that person was not injured. However, there was another individual that's been transported to a local trauma center that is in very serious condition. At this time, we have multiple air assets from the Maryland State Police, as well as the Baltimore Police Department, as well as multiple marine assets from around the region, including Baltimore City, Anne Arundel County, Baltimore County, as well as multiple local and state police uh, agencies, uh, National Resources Police, um, BPD Special Ops Unit is in here, Maryland State Police is here. We have multiple resources. We are still very much in an active search and rescue posture at this point, and we will continue to be for some time. We have a large area that we have to search. This includes on the surface of the water, subsurface, as well as on the deck of the ship itself. We believe at this point, we may be looking for, we may be looking for upwards of seven individuals. That's the latest information we have. However, what I will say is, is the information that I'm giving you right now is as of right now. That's what we know right now. Um, this is a very large incident. It involves a very large footprint. 
multiple agencies are operating therefore information is subject to change as we get more intel um, and as our crews work through the morning um, over the next 8 to 12 hours you can expect to continue to see um, our air and maritime assets functioning um, out on the water and in the air above um, we need to do damage assessment of, of the ship itself before we can board that ship um, and we need to continue our subsurface search which is including um, different types of sonar we have side scan sonar we have other sonar capabilities here we have underwater um, UAVs that we're working with and throughout the night we've also been working with uh, infrared technology both from the air and on the water surface so um, I'm going to wrap up here with just saying this continues to be a search and rescue operation. It continues to be a very dynamic operation with multiple local, state, and federal resources involved. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to our Mayor, Mayor Brandon Scott. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, everyone, this is a unthinkable a tragedy. Uh, we have to, uh, first and foremost, pray for all of those who are impacted, uh, those families. Uh, pray for our first responders and thank them. Uh, all of them working together, uh, city, state, local, to make sure that we are uh, working through this uh, tragedy. Uh, this is an ongoing active uh, research uh, that we're having right now. We're going to continue, as you heard from Chief Wallace, to throughout as long as we have to be doing that, we will do it. Uh, but we have to be thinking about the families and people impacted, uh, folks who uh, we have to try to find and save. This is what our focus should be on right now. We're going to continue to work in partnership with every part of government to do everything that we can uh, to get us through the other side of this tragedy. And with that, I'll turn it over to County Executive Ocheska. Thank you, Mayor Scott. Um, I think we all awoke this morning to an unspeakable tragedy. Uh, as the mayor indicated, we know that there will be families and individuals impacted by this, regardless of what happens the rest of the way out. Uh, so I would just echo the mayor in lifting up prayers for those who are impacted, but also ask that our residents pay, pray for our first responders. Um, you know, they have been on scene since very early in the morning, um, not only conducting initial search and rescue operations, but planning for uh, additional ones as the sun comes up. And, um, you know, the work that they do cannot be understated. And we just, I want to just thank them for all that they are doing and, and will do in the hours and days ahead. Uh, we know that we have a long road ahead, not just in the search and rescue, but in the fallout following this. Uh, I think we appropriately have our attention on the search and rescue efforts currently. Uh, and just here alongside uh, our partners in the city to say that they have our full support, just as we want to thank um, our state partners for the resources they've offered up, uh, as well as uh, the federal partners who have already reached out. Uh, the mayor and I have talked to the governor. We've, we've heard from the secretary of transportation. Uh, so collectively, we thank everyone for uh, their thoughts, their well wishes. Uh, but again, this is a very active situation, and we want to just thank uh, the chief and our teams for all the great work they're doing. And with that, I'll turn things back over to the chief. Thank you, County Executive Olszewski. Um, do some Q and A right now. Now we're just going to go around, have everyone present some questions. Chief, can you tell us where the crew of the ship is? Um, you also mentioned, too, that uh, two people were rescued. Who made the first 911 call? And there were reports that there was a crew on the deck of the ship working at that point. Can you confirm any of that information? The latest information we have on the, sh on the crew of the ship is that they are still on board the ship. Um, there's been comms between the ship crew and the Coast Guard. So as, po as part of the uh, overall operation, we communicate through the Coast Guard with the ship. And, and I'm sorry, your other questions? There were two people taken. Who made the first 911 call? I don't know who's who made that call yet. Okay. And there were, were there other workers on the, the deck of the ship at the, or the deck of the bridge at this point? We had heard that information. Can you confirm that? We were being told there were workers on the bridge. We have yet to confirm that. Um, we'll work with MDTA to, to you know, to obviously to get that information. About how many cars were on that ship? Last question. Uh, on the uh, on the deck of the bridge at the time of collapse. You know Don't have a number. I can tell you our sonar has detected the presence of vehicles submerged in the water. I don't have a count of that yet. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Chief, you mentioned upwards of seven individuals that you're looking for. We've heard reports of as many as 20 individuals. Can you just paint a more clear picture of about how many people actually fell into the water, how many people you might be uh, looking to rescue, and also 
so if you can give an idea of how many vehicles, although we might not have the answer, but really just the circumstances. Yeah, I'll start with the last one. So I don't know how many vehicles yet. I know that we have detected the presence of vehicles. As far as the number between the 7 and 20, that's been a dynamic count um, throughout the morning, just given the fact that we haven't yet nailed that number down. We do believe that at least seven are involved in that, at least seven at this point. I fell into the water. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and I know you said the crew was accounted for for the Coast Guard on deck. Do we know if any of the crew members were part of these, at least seven people that may have been in the water? We do not. So can I just ask, um, the survivability of water throughout this temperature is not very long. At what point do you shift focus to become uh, more of a so we'll be guided by by our dive teams we will determine what the temperature of the water is the other issue that we have out there is this water is 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 current uh, influenced so right now we think the tide is coming back in that adds a bit of a challenge to us also we can certainly dive in these conditions but we have to take a lot of factors into play right the fact that there may be trauma involved they have been in, in the water an extended period of time um, but also remember, we're battling darkness. So, you know, it's, it's quite possible that we may have somebody there that we've not seen yet. Um, and as they work closer to the debris field, um, you know, they'll, they'll obviously make those determinations. But we're gonna rely on the experts, which are our, our, our dive masters that are here, our dive team, to tell us when they believe we've reached that, that, that non-survivability point. Thank you. Yes, sir. We do not have that information with regard to the investigation. I would refer that to, to law enforcement. My, my focus since 140 this morning has been that rescue operation. So, so far there's been no indication that any kind of like an emergency dispatch came from that ship beforehand? I have no information about that, ma'am. Have you, have you been able to talk to the pilot, the American pilot on, on that bridge? The, the, the pilot on the vessel? Yeah. We have not talked to the pilot on the vessel. The, Rescue personnel, the rescue operation, we have not interacted. Just back over here. Can you tell us about the victims of the I don't have age and I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't I don't have age and gender on either. One patient refused service, right? Really they weren't injured. The second patient, however, was seriously injured and is at an area trauma center. Are you including them in the seven at least seven? We don't know yet if they're part of that seven. Okay. The, 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 the patient is injured severely enough that we've not been able to debrief that patient. That seven number, did that come from people witnessing cars going down? Like where did that number come from? Or is that just from the sonar hits that you got? No, that was the initial information that we got as we were arriving on the scene, that number. And that number, again, as I said earlier, has fluctuated, right? But that, that seven has been a consistent number. Oh well, um, yeah, it dozens. I mean, locally, you know, fire department wise, Baltimore County's here, Howard County's here, Harford uh, was here, PG was here, um, Anne Arundel, um, of course, Baltimore City, and a lot of those agencies are here by virtue of the fact that they may have specialized equipment that we need during an incident like this. So um, we're we're bringing in the equipment specific to the operation right now. And then even even law enforcement agencies have a lot of the same marine ops equipment as we do. So given the incident is so big, we try to force multiply and just bring as many resources in as we can so that we can really blanket a large area for a search. What about the fuel spill? What kind of resources are you bringing in to mitigate that? We don't, we've not been able to confirm that we actually have an active fuel spill from the vessel. Um, we've had odors of diesel fuel. The Maryland Department of the Environment is here, um, as well as the Coast Guard. So they would take leads on that as well. We hope as the sun comes up a little bit with the air assets that are up to get a much better picture. If we do have a fuel spill, what the impact has been so far. Can you talk about the air assets that are up as the daylight comes up? How's that going to impact that with those resources? Yeah, Maryland State Police has been here. Um, Foxtrot 
is also working this. They're, they're our two air resources right now. Um, I don't know that we won't bring any more in, but right now they're the two primary. Um, you know, air reconnaissance on something on the open water is just, it's an invaluable resource. And we've been very fortunate to have it because as we put people out in the dark on the water to conduct searches, they have that degree of overwatch from those assets. So it's it's been an invaluable resource for Mr. us. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mr. Executive, uh, we're talking about search and rescue. I know that, and that's where the focus is right now. Uh, I was awakened with this news. We're all awakened with this news. I've seen the video. What, what, what do you make of the totality of this incident? What are, what are you thinking about what you've seen and what this community has experienced now? Well, this is a, a tragedy that you can never imagine, right? And uh, I was awake when Chief Wallace called me, but never would you think that you would see, physically see, the key bridge tumble down like that. It looked like something out of an action movie. And you just think about, most importantly, which is what we all should be thinking about right now, nothing but those families and people that are impacted and those people who are risking their lives right now from not just Baltimore City and Baltimore County, but all over this state to try to save lives. That should be our focus, the preservation of life because no one wants to see that happen, let alone someone in their family, someone that they know uh, uh, be injured in an incident like this.